Hey, how's it going you guys? This is Pet Platypus here. It's time for me to do another Hunter x Hunter double review. This will be episodes 138 and 139. This episode was something, I'll say that. Um, we get a little bit more of the political stuff in the beginning. The narrator explains that they tried doing the vote again and it didn't work. And they're kind of trying to figure out, like, well, maybe if we remove all the invalid votes, then it'll be over 95%. And they're like, some, I think they're calling out Periston on, like, his bullshit. Like, well, yeah, but if you did this, it'd be, like, an underhanded tactic. And he's like, oh, yeah, someone could try and do that. I'd never do that, though. I'm not, I'm, you know. But, yeah, he's a freak. Um, everyone there hates him. I don't really like him that much. But I do like him in the sense that I don't like him. Like, he's just, like, an ag character that you can instantly hate. And apparently Netero picked him because it would be fun, because he wanted to pick someone who he can't stand. That's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, only other thing I really have to say about that scene, because the political stuff, I appreciate that it's important, and I'm, you know, paying attention to it. But like I said before, like during Chimera Ant, I don't really have much to say about it, you know? Like, it's happening, it's cool, it, you know, it's whatever, it's not bad, I just don't have much of an opinion on it. It's not, like, my favorite part of Hunter x Hunter or anything. Um... But yeah, the only other part I'll mention real fast is that I thought it's like an, it's just like a small little picture quality detail. But I am when the bucket of votes were flipped over, all the little pieces of paper on the ground were like folded in different ways. Like you could see some of them were like three folds, two folds, four folds. Like it was kind of cool little detail that they weren't all just a bunch of scattered papers. They actually did that. So that was kind of cool. Nothing important or anything. It was just like a nice little detail. Um, then the rest of the episode is basically fucking Aluka hype. Like, crazy fucking Aluka hype. Like, Killua goes home. I guess he pushed open, like, five gates this time. I guess he used to push open three. So, yeah, he pushes open five gates. He's home. And he goes to his dad. And his dad just, oh, he looks so evil when he's in his little room with the fucking weird walls and the dog thing. It's just like, Wow. And there was this epic scene where they're talking about Aluka and how he's like, oh, that thing? And Killa was like, whoa, what? And he, like, nends up. And then this dog thing gets up. And Killa was just like, sit. And this thing sits down. And I'm like, whoa, Killa, nice. That was good. But, um, they end up going to see Aluka. And, and it's just, it's doorway hype. Like, they go downstairs. They go through one giant metal door. Then another giant metal door. Then another giant metal door. Then another giant metal door. Then they get to the final giant metal door. Possibly skipping like 20 others, I have no idea. And he's basically talking about the rules of Aluka. And he asks what a previous wish was, and apparently it was his brother asking for a computer. And he says, that shouldn't be too bad. And we don't really know what that means, but then it gets explained. And we get this flashback, and the only thing about the flashback I really didn't like was the weird outline that they did around it. It was kind of distracting how a character's hair would go outside the outline, and some things would stay inside of it. It was just kind of distracting me, but... Overall, we get Aluka as a kid, and it's basically just like, you do a few things for her, and then she'll grant you a wish, but there's a trick to this, and it's essentially, like, they basically say, don't, you know, do shit for her, her face gets all weird and crazy and shit, and kind of creepy looking, to be honest, and this one maid basically says no to everything she says, and then she just straight up fucking smashes and dies, and I'm like, whoa, like, she just straight up just, like, crush... And fucking, like, it would have been a great live reaction moment, but, like, that was just insane. I was like, what? And someone else died, and it was crazy. And we got a scene before with, like, adorable little Killua cheering her up and everything. Uh, I think he did the requests for her, like, pick her up or whatever. But basically what it is is you get, a, you get your wish granted if you do four things for her. And depending on how major your wish was, the next things she'll request from the later person will be even more, like, severe. So, like, she goes up, like, the last maid was like, I want a million, I want to be a millionaire. And, like, this whole blimp, like, I thought, like, oh, maybe a lottery ticket fell. No. Raining money from an entire blimp that went missing afterwards. That's insanely overpowered and hacked, but... Not from, like, a combat standpoint, just from, like, a hacks standpoint, but... Because that wish was so big, this next maid was in there, you know, this next butler... And then Aluka's like, yo, spine, liver, you know, brain, give me those things. And she ends up dead. A ton of people died, and he's explaining this to Killua. His dad is explaining this to Killua. And Killua's like, yeah, but fuck it, I know. And, he, and Killua keeps saying her. 
throughout the whole episode. So, I mean, and Alumi, I believe, called it a boy. So, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe Killua is just unaware that it's a boy. I would not blame him. But, yeah. He ends up going inside the room. Um, anything else about this episode? But, yeah, I mean, that's insane hype. I think it's a very interesting Nan ability. Um... What else? It's just kind of crazy. I mean, the way the people would die. Like, it was kind of almost set up like a horror movie, almost. Like, that whole entire scenario was just really well done. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was definitely a good episode. I would definitely go around 8 out of 10. We've been introduced to a new character. It's We can pretty much assume that Killa was going to want going to be healed. That kind of sucks because, you know, it's like you're going to heal an entire person. That means if anyone wants to get a wish from Aluka after that, they're pretty much going to be fucked after Killua does this. But, um, yeah. We'll see where things go. They clearly don't want him to take Aluka out of here, so they're probably... I mean, based on the opening, it looks like there's going to be a struggle. That's going to definitely be interesting. Um, we still don't have a new chairman, but I know that this is an entire arc called, like, the chairman election or whatever. So... We probably won't get a new chairman until the very end, but yeah, we'll just, I'll see what happens, but uh, this episode was pretty good, I'll go 8 out of 10. Um, one last thing I want to mention, um, I could be totally wrong, but um, I think there was like a Sailor Moon cameo in this thing, like legit, I, there was like this, we see a Luca playing with like this doll set, and I saw the doll, and I was like, oh, that kind of looks like Sailor Moon, look at the big pigtails, but then I saw like the doll next to them, and it looked like that one dude, I have no idea what his fucking name is, I don't watch Sailor Moon, but... The dude who has, like, the top hat and, like, the cape and everything, and he wears, like, a mask. So I think that was, like, a Sailor Moon cameo. So that's kind of weird to do that in Hunter x Hunter, but... Actually, no, it's not, because Togashi's married to the, uh, author of Sailor Moon, actually. So never mind, that's not weird at all. Like, genre-wise, that's a weird, uh, reference, but as far as that goes, actually, it actually makes a lot of sense. So yeah, that's kind of cool, and that's probably what it is now that I think about that. But anyways, 8 out of 10, which I've said, like, four times now. Thanks for watching, or not thanks for watching, well yeah, thanks for watching, of course, but um, I'll do my outro when I get to uh, 139, which I'll do right now. Okay, you guys, so, episode 139. This episode was like almost last episode, because it was basically the same thing. We got the rules of Aluki kind of re-explained, as well as some new ones. Definitely a very tricky and complicated ability going on here. A lot of conditions and shit. Which is why the ability is so powerful, presumably. We do get his, uh, not, yeah, Hisoka and Illumi. They're chilling at a bar, talking about how if this goes through, a ton of people could die, including Hisoka, including all the Zoldex, including Gon, if shit goes wrong. So Illumi's like, yeah, you're gonna watch Killua, make sure everything's legit, and if not legit, go and kill Aluka because it's just a girl, or, you know, boy, whatever thing. And. Killa was there, and he's doing the requests, and the first request is to die, and he pretends to die, he like tucks his head inside his shirt, which looked, you know, like his head wasn't even fucking there, but you know, they didn't even try to make it like dramatic or anything, it was obviously he was faking, but yeah, they're doing that, and then the black eyed one, he acts like is another person, so we get more insight into Luca's abilities, which is good. We get some more political stuff that's really not going anywhere, though. Like, they just keep back and forthing on ideas, and, like, it never seems to work. But it's it's okay. It's fine. Nothing, like, it, nothing super special happened during the political section in this episode. Uh, the most important part of this episode is Aluka. We get more flashbacks and just more explanation. Maybe more explanation than needed on her abilities or its abilities, honestly, but I don't know. It's interesting, though, I suppose, so that's good. But yeah, not really too much to say on this episode, honestly. It was a lot of the same of the last episode, so... I'd go... 7 out of 10 for this episode, because I still enjoyed it, but it didn't really feel like a lot of new things happened. I mean, yeah, Hisoka's probably there spying on Killua, and... Killua did... I mean, Killua did get her out, or hit him, it thing out of fucking... Uh, the mountain... You know, he was like, well, mom's gonna die if this doesn't go down. And I like how the mom is proud of him. That was funny. But, um, but yeah, they're outside now. I'm assuming there's still gonna be some kind of struggle. Um, mostly because of the opening, but I just imagine it wouldn't be that easy anyways. 
I'm sure Illumi's gonna try and do something. Ahsoka as well, probably. So yeah, uh, like I said, like a 7 out of 10 for this episode. It was good, but it wasn't like amazing or anything. But yeah, I'll go 7 out of 10 for this episode. Thanks for watching this double review. Tell me what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.